In this video, I'll be showing you how to create a database using Google Sheets, turning that database into an API, and then using that API in our Flutter apps. We've got a lot to do, so let's get started. To get started, I created a new folder in my Google Drive, and then I created a spreadsheet inside that folder, and I've gone ahead and named it SMB Data because we're gonna be building an app based on Super Mario Brothers and listing out all of the characters. Now, the database that you make could be whatever you want, depending on if it's simple for like a simple app like this, or even more complicated, you can still use Google Sheets to do your database for you, as long as you're not saving any you know, privacy data, right? You don't wanna do that. But other than that, simple data for your app to work, you can do that right here and have the flexibility by changing it with Google Sheets, which is really easy. So we can manually write this by name, uh, purpose, and then we also can put if it's an enemy or not, but we're gonna take it a step further because I don't like writing data, um, and if someone else can do it for me, then I might as well have them do it for me. And we can do that by using ChatGBT. So we're gonna jump into ChatGBT, and we're gonna ask it to do the database for us. We can do this by writing, I need a list of all the characters in Super Mario Brothers. Uh, for the NES, I need it written in a table. And then what we wanna do is we wanna tell it our table. Uh, essentially it's a name, a purpose, and then is it an enemy? And then we can go ahead and make sure no spelling mistakes. You could send it with spelling mistakes, but just in case. Now what we wanna do is this doesn't really tell ChatGPT exactly what we want. So what we can do is give it a little bit more information. I need the purpose. Uh, to be detailed. So now I need a detailed purpose and the enemy um, an enemy, we'll call it just an enemy um, to say true if enemy or false if not. And that kind of gives it a, you know, that's what we want. We want enemy to be true or false. We need a detailed purpose of our character. And then of course we need the name of the character, which is pretty self-explanatory. So now ChatGPT is gonna go through and give us that information in a table. So make sure you tell it you want a table and then make sure explain anything if it doesn't make sense. Enemy might make sense to ChatGPT. So we just kind of explain what we want there. And then it's gonna go through and list out all of the characters. Now, I don't know if all of these characters are in the normal uh, NES. Um, I've done this test a few times and it doesn't give me this long of a list, but sure, we'll take it. And then of course you could go through and update the data exactly how you want it to look, uh, but we'll just use what it gives us and we'll go from there. So now what we can do is we can go ahead and paste it. Um, if we do paste it, just control V, it's gonna mess up and look not that great. So we can hit to control shift V and it'll give us just the data itself. And then there we go. We now have our database with a name, a purpose, and if it's an enemy or not. Now what we need to do is we need to take this database that we just made and turn it into an actual API. And the easiest way to do this is we can go up to extensions and go to app script. Now with app scripts open, we can go ahead and rename it. We'll just call it SMB data to match our uh, file name of our database. And then what we wanna do here is we wanna add in the scripting that we need to grab the data from our database and turn it into JSON data. And it's not too complicated for you to do it yourself, but why do something yourself if someone else will do it for you? So we can go back to chat GBT and we can tell it exactly what we need. Uh, great, I like to be nice to chat GBT. I've added uh, that data to my Google Sheets. Make sure you tell it you've added it to Google Sheets. Uh, can you write me the code using app script? Make sure you tell it app script or else it's gonna give you like Python or something or JavaScript. So tell it you wanted an app script and then turn my sheet and you wanna make sure that you wanna tell it to turn your sheet into the API, uh, into an API. If you don't tell it you want the sheet, I've noticed it just give us the data again. So I wanna tell it to use my uh, sheet to turn it into an API. Now, depending on your response, you might not get the best response. Uh, always look for the var headers, values.shift. What that means is it's just gonna shift down one and not include the headers. 
uh, which you can kind of see here. So sometimes it doesn't do that, sometimes it does. I think this is the right way to write it if you want it to, but just play around with it. But this kind of gives you the idea. Uh, here we have the var sheet and we can open it by ID and then we're gonna get the sheet uh, name and then the sheet name is gonna be sheet one. So if you're going to use a different sheet, uh, you would actually put a different name here. Like let's say we added characters or we added items and we had multiple pages, which we could, multiple sheets, then you'd wanna rename this uh, to whatever this sheet name is down right here. Now this does not actually help me because it says uh, spreadsheet.app open by ID. I don't have the ID. Um, so what we can do is we can, um, can you make it where I don't have to include the uh, sheet ID? And then this could rewrite it for you so that you don't have to include the sheet ID and it's gonna grab just the get active sheet. Now again, this is a good way if you're gonna have this with a bunch of different sheets and stuff, um, but really we only need the main sheet, so we're gonna just get, get active sheet because we only have one. And it makes the code a little bit easier that we don't have to change it. Great, so now we can go back to our app script and then we can just select everything and paste it in and just make sure it says do get. Sometimes it doesn't, um, so always make sure it says do get. And then that's it. We now have the database done. We have the scripting needed to turn that database into JSON data. Now all we have to do is deploy our uh, web app so that we can access it. And to do that, you just click deploy, new deployment. And then when this page pops up, you click the little, um, settings icon and go to web app. Here we can give it a new description. We can execute it as me and then who has access, we want anyone. Anyone that has this link can have access. Just be careful you don't share the link if you're gonna be using stuff like that because then they could post to it if you add those functionalities and yeah, you don't want that. So keep it uh, secret but that's how you do it. And then we do need to authorize the access to the app. So click the button, log in with your account. It's gonna tell you that it hasn't been verified and it's not safe. You should not give permission until the developer has actually verified it with Google, um, but that's us. So we're just gonna hit advance and then go to uh, it unsafely. And then we'll just allow it because again, we're the developer, we can do that, but don't do that unless you're the developer. Great, now we're gonna wait for this to update that, and then when it's done, it should give us a URL. All right, so here it's gone ahead and given us the URL, so we can just hit copy and then hit done. If you ever need to go back to your, your uh, website, you can go to manage deployments, and then the URL will be right here, which you can copy. Great, now we can go back to ChatTBT and tell them that we're done, and that we need to start coding our app. Great, I have a, a API URL. We'll give it the URL and then we need to say, um, can you code for me using Flutter a class? Because we want to make a class for our um, API um, for my data using my API. And then this should hopefully do what we want. Now I have done this video a few times. I've tested it to make sure that it works consistently and sometimes it does and sometimes it doesn't. So just be careful if you are using ChatGBT to code everything for you. Um, sometimes it'll be perfect. Sometimes you're gonna get a lot of errors. So just keep that in mind. Uh, obviously you should be coding yourself or at least know how to code it yourself in case you get some errors but I've done this many times and I get uh, different results every time. So, <laughs> so just keep that in mind. But here we go, it's gone ahead and given us the data. Essentially it's importing convert because we're gonna switch from JSON data and then the, also the HTTP and it's created a class for us. So this class is very simple. It's just gonna grab a name, purpose, and is it an enemy. It's gonna require all of that information every time we use the class. And then it's created a factory for us, which is nice. So what it can do is we can just call from J, uh, Mario character dot from JSON. And then from here, it's going to do the name is the JSON name, the purpose is the JSON purpose, the is enemy is JSON enemy, which is equal to true. Um, so it's gonna go through that data and then just essentially turn it into 
um, an object uh, with our class. And then we also have it here where it's going to fetch our data. So we can just call uh, fetch all, and then that's going to grab our data. As long as it gets a response, it's going to code our uh, response into uh, decode it from JSON into an actual data. And then it's just going to map that data using our factory. So it's going to go through the database of everything we gave it and then just turn it into the data exactly how we need it as a Mario character, which again, it's weird that it called it a Mario character because there's other characters, um, but a character and then it has a name, a purpose, and it is enemy. So we're going to copy this and jump over to our code. And then what we can do is because this is a model, we can go to our lib folder, uh, type in models, and then we can make a new file inside of there and call it character underscore model dot dart and we're going to paste this in now right away we're going to get an error because we need to install the http so we can do that by control tilde and then flutter uh, pub add uh, http there we go. So we've now installed HTTP. Everything works great there. So we can save. Now what we need to do is go back to ChatGBT and we need to grab out the second piece of code that it gave us. Essentially, it's returning a, a list view builder. And then this is not a full app. Uh, let's just ask us to, can you code the full, can you code the full uh, state full widget called characters and return my data. Uh, also for the is enemy, can you make it a green thumbs up if not an enemy and a red thumbs down thumbs down if an enemy. And the cool thing about ChatGPT is you can tell it to change the code for you. And the reason why I told it that is one of the tests that I did, it gave me that information. It gave me a green thumbs up if it's not an enemy and a red thumbs down, but sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. So it's very weird how um, sometimes you'll get exactly what you think you want and other times you won't. Um, but again, you can just go back to ChatGPT and say, hey, I want it this way. Can you do it for me that way? And if you look right here, it actually gave us the class again, uh, which we could copy, but we already have it. Uh, so we're just going to copy the, um, the stateful widget that it gave. So we'll copy that. And now what we can do is we can go to pages, new file, and call this characters underscore page dot dart. There we go. And then we will do this. Now, of course, we're getting a few errors. One error that we're getting is the Mario character. We're going to have to click the light bulb and import our model. But the other error that we're getting is going to be on characters. Um, for some reason, ChatGPT does not add uh, constructors. By default, you can actually tell it to, but by default it won't. And then it always messes up the state. And I don't know why. Again, we could tell it to fix it, but it's easier for us to just fix it. Uh, so just keep that in mind. It's going to mess up your state every single time, and I don't know why. And then here it didn't add a const here. Uh, we can add the const for it uh, just because I don't like squiggles. And then if we hit save we should be good to go. We don't actually need these two because they're imported in our model. But if we hit save, and then uh, what we need to do is go back to our main, and instead of returning our home page, we just need to return uh, our characters stateful widget and hope that it didn't use that name anywhere. All right. That was another issue I had. It used the same name more than once. And uh, let's go ahead here. Yep, so here we're getting an issue with the characters. Let's see if we can grab it this way. There we go. And it's not working. Why is it not working? Because it might be overlapping another name. So what we have to do here is just switch it out from characters uh, to... We'll do all of this. Uh, hit Control D to do that. Do my characters. There we go. And now we should be able to call my characters. Sometimes ChatGBT doesn't realize that it's using the same information. And there we go. We hit save and we have a list of Mario uh, purpose and is it good or is it bad? And these are all green, which is not good. We actually want them to not turn it to true. There we go. 
And if we refresh, this should hopefully give us a data where some are green and some are bad. There you go. So Mario is the enemy. Are they flipped? <laughs> they might be flipped. All right, so it looks like our data is kind of backwards. Chat, I didn't even realize ChatGBT said Mario and Luigi are the enemy, but Princess Toadstool is not. Okay, and then uh, Bullet Bill is not an enemy, and uh, some of these are not enemies. So interesting, it doesn't know if Mario or not is not an enemy. Well, what we can do then is we know that Mario is not an enemy, right? Uh, we know that Luigi is not an enemy, uh, so we can actually turn them. Uh, into false. Bowser is definitely an enemy. Goomba, Cooper, Piranha, Bullet. That's so funny that it did that. But here's the best part. We changed our data and now we can just refresh our app and that's going to change the data for us. There we go. And that's the beauty of an API. If you need to update something that was wrong or something that's changed over time, you don't have to edit the code that we've already written. You can just jump right back into Google Sheets and change the data and there you go. It's now green for Mario Luigi, red for all of the other enemies and then I guess Bullet Bill Cannon is not an enemy. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know what you have plans of doing with the Google Sheets. It makes it very easy, very edible, and can expand a lot. You can have different sheets for different data, and you can do your entire app's data for this. I just wanted to show you a quick little uh, you know, snippet of how you could use it. And the best part is I didn't have to code that much. ChatGBT did all the code for us and then we could just tweak the code exactly how we want it. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Check out the one on the screen and I'll see you in the next one.